Okay, so how to find the function? That is the question that we're going to answer in this video. And this is a uh, very common question, uh, especially for those of you like are, that are in like an Algebra 2 course, College Algebra, certainly pre-calculus. Uh, for those of you that are like in Algebra 1, you may face this type of question as well. But effectively, uh, the question kind of goes like this. You'll be given a graph with some information on that graph, and what we want to do is reconstruct the function. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, uh, in this particular problem, we're going to be dealing with polynomials. So the question might go something like, um, uh, the following is a graph of a polynomial. Find the function or write the function to that polynomial given its graph. Now, polynomials, okay, are very, very uh, uh, important in algebra. If you don't know what a polynomial is, effectively, a polynomial has these terms. It could be one or two variables, something like x to the 7th plus x to the 5th plus uh, 9, for example, is a polynomial x squared minus x plus 2 is a polynomial. What makes these a polynomial is that the power to uh, the variables has to be a non-negative um, integer, okay? Basically, a, uh, uh, a natural number, a counting number, okay? Well, it could be 0 to a whole number as well, but uh, you can't have something like uh, x to the 1 half. That is not a polynomial. So if you're not sure what a polynomial is, you want to kind of investigate that, but these are extremely... Uh, important in uh, your study of algebra. It's, you know, a huge amount of what you learn in algebra has to deal with polynomials. But one of the characteristics of polynomials is that their graphs are smooth and continuous, okay? And they have nice, lovely, uh, round curves like this. You're not going to have a graph that's like this or something crazy like this. So uh, polynomials are awesome. And even in more advanced mathematics, we love polynomials, especially things like in calculus and whatnot, because we can easily manipulate them. But anyways, not to go off on a tangent about polynomials, uh, but it's important that you understand what a polynomial is. So really, you know, to get back to this problem, the question would be, given the graph of this uh, polynomial, write the function to this uh, polynomial f of x equals to what? Okay, well, we're going to have all these terms here, and we can actually uh, reconstruct that equation given this information, okay? And it's important that you know how to do this, and I'm going to uh, show you exactly what to do step by step in just one second, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, there's no such thing as a bad math student, okay? Everyone can be reasonably, reasonably successful in mathematics, but it requires two things. One, you got to be willing to do the work. If you're just not willing to take notes or you do the homework, well, you know, if you're having troubles in math, you know, it's kind of obvious that you're going to have to start doing the work, right? So start making more of an effort if you're not doing that now. The second thing you need is great math instruction, clear and understandable. That's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. It will really, really help you out. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with the math section, things like GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, Teacher Certification Exam, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, have great middle and high school homeschool math courses, definitely check those out. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel. That definitely helps me out. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get into the problem. All right, so again, we're talking about a polynomial here. We're looking for a polynomial function, but we need to understand something about uh, functions, okay? When you have a polynomial function, the graph of that function gives us all sorts of clues about what's going on with this function. Now, really, I need to kind of state that we're looking for a third degree, a third degree polynomial function. Okay, I should have made that a little bit clearer in the beginning of this um, uh, video because uh, when you look at a graph of a polynomial, the locations of where that graph chops through or intersects the x-axis, and here that information is given to us, here it's uh, intersecting at 6, 2, and negative 3. These points here, if this is a third degree polynomial, and this is a, a, not a trivial little detail. So we're looking for the function of a third degree polynomial. Well, a third degree polynomial means that its highest power is to the third power. We don't know the rest of the um, 
uh, function. We're looking for that. But if you have a third degree polynomial, what does this mean? A third, like this three here, a third degree polynomial means the highest power is three. And we have this thing called the fundamental theorem of algebra, which basically says the degree of the polynomial is how many solutions that polynomial is going to have. So with the third degree polynomial, this is going to have three solutions. Now, it can have three uh, real number solutions. It can have a combination of real and imaginary solutions. So this is kind of gets into, you know, a little bit more advanced mathematics. Again, you know, uh, generally speaking, Algebra 2 and beyond level. Okay, but again, if you're in Algebra 1, stick with me because you'll understand this. Okay, now, with that being said, when I'm if I'm told that this is the graph of a third-degree polynomial, and I can see that it's going through the x-axis here, 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 these are real number solutions, okay? This is a real number solution, this is a real number solution, and this is a real number solution. So these are our three solutions to this polynomial uh, function, okay? This polynomial equation. So negative three, two, and six are our solutions. So whatever function this is, okay, if I was to solve it, our answers are gonna be x is equal to negative three, x is equal to two, and x is equal to 6. Just remember, uh, the x-intercepts, okay, when you have a graph, are those real number solutions to that particular function. That's a pretty big principle or concept in mathematics. All right, so with that being said, we're going to use these solutions to kind of reverse engineer this to find the actual function. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here we know that negative 3, 2, and 6 are uh, solutions to this particular function I'm looking for. Now, what you need to do is to write these solutions in terms of something called a linear factor, all right? So this is what I'm, um, uh, these are the linear factors for these respective solutions. So the first is x plus 3. I'm going to explain this here in a second. For our solution x is equal to 2, we're going to write that as x minus 2. For our solution x is equal to 6, we're going to write x minus 6. So these are what we call linear factors, all right? Now, let's suppose I gave you this equation right here. x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 6. And I said set that, let's set this equal to 0. Let's say solve this equation, okay? So how would we solve this equation? Well, we would set each one of these factors equal to 0, okay? Because this is this being multiplied by this being multiplied by this. We would set each one of these factors equal to 0, right? And solve. So x plus 3... We'd set that equal to 0, x minus 2. We set that equal to 0, x minus 6. We set that equal to 0, and guess what we would get? We would get x is equal to 6 for that one. We would get x is equal to 2 for this one, and we would get x is equal to negative 3 for this equation right here, okay? So anytime you're writing a linear factor, whatever your x-intercept right there, it's going to be x minus a. That's kind of the fancy way of doing it. But it's really, it's x, you, you write an x, okay, minus whatever value that is, okay? If it's 6, it's going to be x minus 6. That's a linear factor. Here, it's negative 3, so it's going to be x minus a minus 3, which, of course, would make that x plus 3, okay? So these are our linear factors. Now, this is starting to make sense. I'm like, oh, okay. I have, um, oops, let me go and erase this here. We have x plus 3 x minus 2 and x minus 6. These are our linear factors. So this is basically the function. You're like, oh, well, is that it? Well, yeah, kind of, sort of. Uh, these are our three linear factors. We can create a function. Okay, we could set that equal to f of x. And now if I really wanted to kind of, um, you know, establish this uh, function or write it, you know, uh, completely, you know, as, you know, we're, we could see all of its uh, variables. Well, what we could do is just start multiplying these linear factors together. So I would start with these two, for example, x minus 2 times x minus 6. You can just use the FOIL method, this times this times this times this. Hopefully this is all review for you. You would get this trinomial, and then I would multiply that by x plus 3. Of course, hopefully you know how to do that. If you don't, I have tons of videos on all this stuff. You just check out my Algebra 2 course to teach you all this stuff and much, much more. But effectively, what you're going to end up in the end when you do all this multiplication is this guy right here. And this is the answer, okay? We just wrote the uh, function, the poly uh, this polynomial function that goes with this graph, okay? Now, how can we be sure? 
Well, I'm going to show you exactly how we could be sure. Let's go ahead and go down here for a second. And I'm stating that this is the answer. Well, uh, anytime, if this is in fact the answer, if I was to plug in, let's say f of 2, okay, if I plugged in f of 2 into this function, what should I get uh, out? So in other words, if I replace this, this, and this with 2, and I did all this arithmetic, what should I get? Well, you're going to get uh, 0, okay? So at 2, the graph is at 0, all right? So if you did the same thing for negative 3, you would get 0. And if you did this for f of 6, you would get uh, 0 as well, okay? Hopefully this makes sense to you. But let's go ahead and just check one of these points out. And I think we'll do uh, 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in 2 into the function, and let's see if, in fact, we get 0 out. All right, so we're going to find f of 2 into our lovely function right here, which I believe is the correct third-degree polynomial that goes with this graph. So f of 2, that's going to be 2 cubed. Again, I'm just replacing the x is here with 2. I'm going to replace the 2 there, 2 there, and 2 there. So that's going to be 2 cubed, which is 8. This would be 2 squared, which is 4 times 5. Of course, that's going to be uh, minus 20. Uh, 12 times 2 right there, that would give me 24. And then I have 36. So let's go ahead and add up the positive numbers. 8 and 36 is 44. And then I have negative 20 minus uh, uh, negative 24. That's negative 44. So 44 minus 44 is what? It is 0. It checks out as I thought it would because I've been doing this stuff for several decades. Now, if you understood all this, I must go ahead and give you a lovely little happy face, an A plus 100%. Uh, I'll give you a few stars. Matter of fact, I might even go ahead and give you a good old 1986 flat top haircut. That was a pretty impressive haircut back in the day. I don't see it, unfortunately, around uh, uh, too much more. But uh, anyways, if you have... Uh, hair and you want to like shorten it up because it's hot outside. <laughs> That's a great haircut. But anyways, don't uh, consult with me in terms of fashion, especially hair fashion, because I don't have that much of it anymore. Uh, I am the guy to go to in terms of mathematics help. But anyways, listen, that's, an, uh, uh, you know, if you understand this already, that shows me that you've been paying attention in your respective math classes. Again, this is stuff that you're going to see in like Algebra 2, College Algebra, you may not see this fully in Algebra 1, but it's right around the corner because after Algebra 1 and Geometry, you're going to be taking Algebra 2 and um, and beyond. So, you know, what's the secret to, you know, really, you know, not being confused with all this? Well, the secret is to be learning everything, you know, uh, uh, you know, all these chapters that you learn in Algebra, they're all interrelated, okay? So when you learn algebra, whether it be algebra 2, mathematics, you're learning this chapter, you're learning this chapter or unit, you're learning this chapter unit, and at the time, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, these are like, this is, whoops, uh, this here is not related to this. Well, actually, it's all interrelated, okay? It all gets kind of connected, big picture, and, uh, you know, when you're doing a problem like this, you need to know a lot about polynomials, quadratic equations, uh, you know, graphing, et cetera, et cetera. So don't get overwhelmed, okay? If you're like, oh, I can't do this, find out where you're at, find out what you know and don't know, and start working on your weaknesses one little skill at a time. Uh, eventually, you can get there. So hopefully, I can help you out, and hopefully, this video helps you out. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, check out all my math help. You can find the links to all that stuff in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.